In this video, we use a remote backend on Azure Storage for the Terraform state file. So far, we've written our Terraform files, created modules, and passed variables and outputs between them. But we've been operating as a team of one. You won't always be alone. I'm here for you, my friend. As for Terraform, at some point, we'll need to collaborate with others. That's what this video is about. Before that, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, check out my courses on hybrid identities with Azure AD and Azure Virtual Desktop on udemy.com. The link is below. And check out the new membership button if you're so inclined. Let's talk about the state file. Terraform.tfstate is a JSON-based file that's created when we run Terraform init. The Terraform state maps real-world resources to the configuration. It tracks metadata such as dependencies between resources and improves performance for large infrastructures by caching information on the resources in the state. By default, Terraform uses a local state file created in the root directory to plan and make changes to the infrastructure. This is fine for a party of one, but not when we're working with a team. Imagine if a group was working on the same infrastructure, but each had a different version of the state file. Configuration could easily overlap and cause all sorts of issues. How do we address this potential issue when working in a team to deploy infrastructure as code? We could use a centralized state file that everyone has access to. Terraform supports storing remote states in Terraform Cloud, Amazon S3, Azure Blob Storage, Google Cloud Storage, Alibaba Cloud, and more. These remote states can be accessed and shared by multiple people. As this series is on Terraform with Azure, we're not going to use Google Cloud Storage for the remote state. We'll use Azure Blob Storage. In order for this to work, we first have to set up the storage account, and then we'll provide access with the storage account key. We'll store this key as an environment variable for Terraform to use. After that, we'll create a backend block in the Terraform main.tf file, instructing Terraform to use the Azure storage account for the state file. Finally, we'll create a deployment and verify the remote state is working. Let's get started in VS Code. Here we are in VS Code. We're going to start by creating a storage account with the Azure CLI. Be sure you're logged into the correct subscription with the command az account show. Funny thing, we're creating a storage account for Terraform, but not using Terraform to create it. Terraform is an option, but for this example, we'll use the CLI. Consider that the Terraform state file in this storage account is not a stateless resource, meaning we can't just destroy and recreate it as needed. There's state data in the storage account needed for our deployments. By definition, the state file is, well, stateful. This is a script file, but it's intended to be ran line by line. You could also create a storage account in a container in the portal if that works better for you. Let's walk through this with the Azure CLI. Set the resource group name and the storage account name along with a container in the storage account. The container is what will hold the state file. The get random command will add random characters to the storage account name so it's unique. I hope you enjoy my mix of PowerShell and Azure CLI. Why use one scripting language when you can use two? Run the variables to add them to memory. Highlight, right click, and select Run Line in Terminal to run that block of code. Create the resource group with the az group create command. We'll run the line in the terminal. Now that we have the resource group, we can create the storage account. Then we'll run the next line that creates a container in the storage account. Let's take a look at the storage account in the portal. Here we are in the resource group, and we also have the new storage account. And if we go to containers, we have our TF state container. And right now that's empty. We're not done yet. Let's go back to VS Code. Next, we need to provide access to that backend storage account. We do this with the following commands. The first command gets the storage account key for the account we just created. The next command adds it to the ARM access key or ARM access key environmental variable. Terraform uses that to access the account. Let's highlight and run. And now that key is part of the environmental variable. There are a few options for managing this key. It could be pasted right into the main.tf, 
but it's a bad idea to store security items in plain text. We could also leverage Key Vault. For now, we'll add it as an environmental variable to this machine. Keep in mind, in a team setting, each member of the team needs this key to access the storage account. If you've created the storage account through the portal, you can get the key from the storage account. Under Security and Networking, Access Keys. Now things will get really interesting. We have the storage account set up. Let's add the backend configuration to our Terraform main.tf file. You can use any Terraform deployment for this. I'm using a simple resource group deployment because I was feeling lazy. You can find this example on my GitHub repo. The link is below. We'll go to the Terraform section of the main.tf. We'll add a new block in Terraform called backend with the local name Azure RM. So this is under required providers. Next, we'll supply it some values, including the resource group name. The storage account name. And the container name. Next, we'll add the key. This is not the storage account access key. Don't be confused by the name. The key value is the name of the file in blob storage. It can be any name like dev terraform.tf state. We'll call it terraform.tf state for this example. We don't have to add the storage account key because that's set as an environmental variable. Save the file and let's open up the terminal and we'll run Terraform init. We get a message that it successfully configured the backend and that will be used for the changes. That's promising. Notice also there's no terraform.tf state file in the root of the directory. Let's run Terraform plan next. That all looks good. Before we move on, let's take another look at the storage account in the portal. Here we are in the storage account. Let's go to containers, go into TF state, and there's our file terraform.tf state. If we click on that, we can get some information about the file. Notice the lease status is unlocked and the lease state is available. Now let's go back to VS Code and run terraform apply. While that's running, let's go back to the terraform.tf state file in the storage account, do a refresh. And now the lease status shows locked and the state shows leased. This is one of the benefits of using a shared state file in a remote backend. It prevents multiple actions that may conflict with each other from taking place at the same time. And that applied successfully. That's how we use a remote backend with an Azure storage account. I hope that helps you better understand what a remote state is, why to use one, and how to configure a backend with Azure storage accounts. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.